So, finally, I'm going to redo the tier list. Yes, it's happening. It is happening. Um, there's been a reasonable amount of changes in the last two months or so since I last did this uh, that has made me feel as if it's worthwhile going over this. We're now, what, like less than a week away from Shadowlands uh, actually launching. So a lot of you guys, I imagine, are now trying to solidify exactly what your main character is going to have, what you're doing, uh, and that sort of thing. So I'm not a huge fan of redoing videos, but I think this is worthwhile doing. So we'll go through the professions one by one. We'll slap them on the tier list and we can have a little bit of a discussion, potentially, as we are streaming this live, uh, onto what our thoughts are on that. So first and foremost, Let's get let's get get enchant uh, archaeology out of the way. That was an easy one, um, but let's go let's go with some of the the, the less obvious ones. Um, inscription is still S tier. Uh, let's let's get inscription out of the way first. In inscription is still easily an S tier profession. Um, quite simply, the fact that it's just got so much going for it at the beginning of Shadowlands. Um, missives. I have mixed feelings on the missives, but they are still definitely going to be a seller because, simply because of the legendaries. Um, everybody that wants to craft a legendary is going to require two missives. Um, so, yeah, craft them, sell them, easy game. Dark Moon cards is going to be a big one, that is for sure. Uh, not Dark Moon cards is not going to be as big of a hype, I think, as it was back in BFA, but it's still going to be... It's still going to be big. There's there's no barrier to entry. Everybody can make a spot, make a scribe, and start banging out Dark Moon cards um, to hopefully start making the decks or even selling the individual cards. So there's likely to be a lot more competition this time round. Um, but hey ho, they're 200 item level trinkets going into the first raid. I can't imagine anybody will step foot in the first raid without a Dark Moon trinket equipped, um, unless they get really lucky with getting their getting better ones from wherever else they come from so uh, the fact that you can just go to the auction house once you ding 60 and pick up an item level 200 trinket is crazy powerful for virtually any character that puts it way up there in my opinion um so what do we talk about oh and the contracts as well if you main inscription you've got the contracts now of course you need to be revered with each of the main factions in shadowlands before you can buy the pattern to craft the contracts to make it easier for everybody else to get their rep with that faction. Um, but it does mean that the first people that do that can charge a huge premium for those contracts. Um, and all of these things combined uh, are going to put Inscription as arguably one of the best professions. New subs, thank you, thank you. Very much appreciate it. Welcome to the channel. Um, so yeah, Inscription, S tier, virtually, <laughs> virtually a no-brainer in my opinion. Um, enchanting, let's talk enchanting for a minute then. Um, enchanting is A tier. It's not S tier, it's A tier, and it's not B, and it's not C. Enchanting's had a lot of changes recently. Um, enchanting is in a weird, weird situation uh, that the crystals for enchanting are going to be super rare, uh, at least for the first, until people get heavily invested into, the, in, into Mythic Plus. Uh, crystals are going to be rare, that's going to make it very difficult for enchanters. Not necessarily difficult, there'll still be crystals knocking about, but what I should really say is they're going to be expensive. Um, leveling up enchanting, it wouldn't surprise me uh, if you could drop 100k, 200k leveling enchanting if you want to do it in the first week. It's going to be really expensive to do. There is some big rewards that you could obtain from that. Um, for example, the uh, base legendary items that everybody's going to want. Um, an enchanter has their part to play in every single base legendary item that's created. Um, tailors, leather workers, jewel crafters, blacksmiths, uh, oh, not jewel crafters actually in this case, but leather workers, tailors, and blacksmiths all require enchanted versions of some of the materials to be able to create the base legendary items. So those enchanters that level up quickly get to maximum skill and start crafting these things are likely to be able to make a lot of gold from them um, simply because there won't be many people that will be able to craft them but there'll be a large amount of people that need the materials so you get put in a nice position where you can charge a premium 
um, for what for an enchanter once they get the patterns will be very little work uh, and of course once we hit the raid enchants just explode everybody tries to enchant their gear uh, it's looking pretty good it's A tier it's not S tier it's not quite as powerful as inscription um, there's a lot more gold to be made with inscription I feel but enchanting is not far behind um, we've talked a little bit about the uh, about blacksmithing, tailoring, jewel crafting, all of that sort of stuff. I'm gonna say these are these are, these are difficult, but these are also both t uh, t blacksmithing, leatherworking, leatherworking and blacksmithing are about the same. Um, I'll explain why tailoring is not on the same level as these. Um, tailoring is going to be. You're going to have a lot of competition with tailoring simply because the availability of the materials is going to be so much greater. Um, everybody can pick up cloth. Um, tailors get even more cloth, uh, which usually means that cloth is the most abundant material. When it becomes super abundant, it means that the profession that uses it, namely tailoring, becomes more of a utility class or a uh, utility profession should I say. A lot of tailors for example will be used for crafting like green items to then send to an enchanter for disenchanting. In BFA of course we had the shuffle which kept them busy for uh, a large part of their time. Um, but it's unlikely going to make as much gold as blacksmithing and leatherworking will do from the base legendary items. Yeah it's got the bags which you can argue is, is, is going to be a nice long-term benefit for, for a tailor, but I still definitely think that both leatherworking and blacksmiths are going to make considerably more gold with their base legendary items, simply because the materials to make them will be rarer. Um, yeah, leatherworking kind of almost, is almost S tier. It's very close. If I could put it in the middle, I would put it in the middle. Um, it's almost S tier itself, but that's mainly because it covers both male items and leather items. So all of a sudden it caters for like literally half the game uh, in terms of crafting base legendary items. Um, but it's going to be super expensive to actually level them up. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of gold to be made from, from them if you can. Um, so they're about the same. Um, what else I suppose? We should probably talk jewel crafting. Um, Jewel crafting is going to be very good at the beginning. The problem is, is the jewel crafting is B. Jewel crafting falls into the same category as uh, tailoring. Now, normally, jewel crafting is one of my favourite professions, and normally I would say that jewel crafting is considerably better than this. But there's one significant problem that jewel crafting has this time round in Shadowlands to what it normally has. Um, and it's that you're gonna jewel crafters are gonna prospect crazy amounts of ore to get the materials they need to create the base legendary items. The 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 shadow gas neck and the shadow gas ring are the two base legendary items that jewel crafters can make, and they require a lot of essences. These essences only come from prospecting, which is going to mean that jewel crafters have a lot of spare gems kicking about, which weirdly kind of crushes the value of the rest of the profession it's going to make gems really cheap this expansion even at the beginning um now on top of the fact that blizzard have now put into place that only five of your item slots uh can have gem slots on them i suppose six technically because you have two rings um uh, you can't equip gems in every single piece of gear anymore uh which is somewhat of an artificial uh, sort of soft nerf to jewel crafting to begin with so it doesn't quite reach the powerful gold making potential that it has in past expansions and keeps it for me at least as a B tier profession going forward um, I guess I kind of need to talk about engineering this one's going to this annoys people because en engineering is one of those professions that you know if you need engineering if you're if you need the battle res that's available for engineering for like mythic plus then instantly for you it puts it S tier. But that's very specific to each and every uh, profession. For the purpose of this, I'm talking primarily on a goal making basis. Um, and realistically, it means that engineering doesn't have many options for making gold. PVPers are gonna pick up 
engineering because of all of the bombs and utility that it offers in PvP. Um, but they're also then likely to craft all of that stuff themselves if they need it. Um, there's, there's not much of a crafting to sell kind of market with engineering. We get a new pet with engineering, uh, but you've got to be exalted with somebody. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head who it is, but it means there's a very, very extensive rep grind before you even get access to making the pet. Um, even then, we know from the, from past experience that pets have a huge uh, initial value to them, but very quickly diminish. Um, and unfortunately, with engineering so far, no new mount, um, which means if it had a mount, it would probably be beta instantly just simply because you could craft a mount but no new mount keeps it keeps it tier c for me um let's talk let's talk let's talk let's go alchemy let's go alchemy alchemy is uh alchemy is a difficult one alchemy is a difficult one because it's very seasonal um i think it's hard to say that alchemy isn't an a tier it's not s tier um because there's no there's no solid option for transmutes this time around, unfortunately. We don't have the anchor weed equivalent. Um, it may come in future patches, we don't know. Uh, unless it stands right now, alchemy is going to be super beneficial for its potions and its flasks when the raid comes out. Um, but with no transmute, means it doesn't step into S tier. And of course, once the raid is done, it drops off very, very quickly. But it's still good. there's still going to be loads of money to be made from it. The difficulty is going to be for alchemists, though, I will tell you right now, is you're going to have crazy, crazy competition. Expect to sit at the auction house and literally farm the auction house uh, because there's no ranks with your professions in Shadowlands. And with no ranks, it means that anybody can level up their alchemy and start crafting potions at the same level as you. Um... Which, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna entice a lot of competition to the to to the profession. The only thing that's gonna hold alchemy back a little bit is the fact that inscription also uses herbs, but is potentially more valuable. Um, the demand from the alchemists, uh, the, sorry, the demand from the scribes is gonna, in a weird way, is gonna keep alchemy profitable long term. I think. Oh, and flasks. I should mention flasks ever so quickly. The DPS, there's only two flasks in Shadowlands now. You have basically Flask of Power and Flask of Stamina. That's not their exact names, I don't think. But you have a DPS and a Healing uh, Flask that's really expensive. And then you have the Stamina Flask that's a lot less expensive, by about a third. Um, so tanks have a cheaper option for their flasks. But your DPS and your healers expend expect to be... Um, Spending a lot on flasks, but I'm sure you're used to that if you raid anyway. Uh, what should we talk about now? Should we do some, should we do some, uh, well we have to do some, well I'll tell you what. Let's do fishing and cooking quickly, then we'll get to the ones that most people actually want to hear about. Um, cooking, cooking's B. Um, cooking, uh, at the beginning of the beta it looked really good. Um, unfortunately they've made some tweaks and changes to cooking. It's real simple, easy mode now. And with no ranks to feasts even, it's once again, competition is just, just going to crush it. Uh, it's going to crush it into the floor really fast. Uh, there's only 75 skill points you need to level up cooking now. So it's actually really quick to max it out even. It's really quick for anybody to get access to make their own feasts if they want to. Um, and considering you probably only need like a handful of feasts when you go raiding, it wouldn't take you more than an hour or so to go farm the materials if you wanted to do it yourself um, and that alone means that it's going to restrict the, uh, the, the the amount of profit you can charge for selling them on the auction house um, so yeah not much to say about cooking it's pretty simple pretty basic you'll still make good gold with it the, when the raid comes out though um, for obvious reasons it's always a it's, a it's a very seasonal it's like alchemy it's just not as strong as alchemy um, so hence why it's, it's B tier Fishing. Fishing is unfortunately C tier. Uh, in my previous video that I sp spoke about professions, uh, I put these at a similar level. But that was because you needed almost as many fish as you needed meat to craft virtually everything. Now the way that it's been set up is that you can basically level cooking to max without touching a single fish. Uh, or, I mean, literally only a handful of them. Um, fishing is literally just going to be a 
pass time for some people to literally kill time. Yes, the feasts still do still need some fish to craft, um, but way less than what it was at the beginning of the beta. So unfortunately, it's had a bit of a nerf as it stands on the beta. So fishing is still going to be C-class. If you've got nothing better to do, though, put Netflix on, cast your rod. You'll still make some gold from it for sure. But right. Now the ones that people really want to hear about. The gathering professions. Where do I think the gathering professions are going to sit? Um, let's talk skinning first. Skinning is S tier. Skinning is going to be crazy, crazy popular. Uh, and you're going to make a lot of gold with skinning. We've done some skinning on stream today. Some of you guys watching right now live will have seen us do that. And uh, skinning has had some a roller coaster of changes on the beta. It went out... It started off by having the materials be really, really super rare. Uh, then it went to the materials being like crazily overly abundant, and now they've dialed it back to most of the most of the rare materials actually being super rare again. Um, which leaves me to only suggest to you guys that if you have a skinner, it's worthwhile getting them leveled up relatively quickly. Maybe not your alt. I wouldn't necessarily say, uh, sorry, sorry, your main. I wouldn't necessarily say your main. But if you've got a demon hunter kicking about that uh, you want to have as an alt this expansion, um, give him skinning. Uh, you spend a couple of hours doing some skinning, I guarantee you're going to be able to sell those materials for a pretty penny. Uh, because you're going to have those leather workers that are going to need a lot of materials because they're going to want to make leather items and male items, Skinners are going to have an absolute field day, in my opinion. Um, competition will be an issue for you, as a lot of people will probably want to do the same. Um, some spots may get very heavily contested, so keep your eyes on the channel. We'll, uh, we'll post some some good skinning spots for you to, to dance between. If one's too competitive, maybe hop to another. It may not give you the same results, but as if you're not competing for, for skins, um, then that's a good option. One thing with skinning as well, in the, if you do plan to do some skinning in the very first week, you're, you want to live in Bastion. And I'll tell you why, because everybody has to go through Bastion as their first zone when they level in Shadowlands on their first character. So the first week, Bastion is going to be cram-packed full of people leveling. Virtually everything in Bastion is a beast. So you as a, as a skinner can pretty much just run around and just skin, 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 skin. skin. Uh, you probably won't even have to spend much time killing, which is probably going to make it super, super valuable to you the first week. Um, bear that in mind if you plan to take skinning on board. Um, but there's there's some big, big potential there. Uh, and then herbalism mining. Herbalism mining, I, I'll do them both in one go. It's real simple, real straightforward. They're both A tier. Uh, they're not necessarily S tier because I still think you'll make more with skinning. But... Since we had the, uh, the the very, very stern nerfs to multiboxing, um, it's put the gathering professions in a really, really good spot. If you are one of those characters that are always struggling for gold or you're trying to get into your gold-making journey, now is time to level that druid. Now is time to give that druid herbalism, give that druid mining. Um, and run around and gather herbs and all like, like an absolute madman. It wouldn't surprise me if you can make 30, 40, 50,000 gold an hour pretty comfortably in the first few weeks of Shadowlands just herbing and mining. If you're trying to get your initial like amount of gold up, then pair those two professions together and you'll make an absolute killing. Or even better still, use those materials in a crafting profession to make some items maybe try and dump it into dark moon cards maybe try and make uh, some gems make some base legendary items with your gems maybe send the ore to your blacksmith uh, make some make some uh, gear to sell on the auction house there's a lot of options available with gathering uh, and it's a really good stepping stone into actually making some of the big bucks so there we go i think that's pretty much my new updated tier list i think that kind of covers my thought process of all of the professions going into Shadowlands. Um, there's some subtle differences there to what was previous, but I hope that's helpful to you. So guys, that was useful to you. 
please make sure to give the video a like. It really does help the uh, the growth of the channel. If you're new around here, there's loads of new people kicking around the, the, the live streams and the YouTube videos. Lots of you are leaving comments, which I really appreciate. So if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments down below. Guys, I'll see you, see you all next time. Peace.